here we have the SR-71, the uh, famous Blackbird. They just brought this plane in yesterday to the museum. Being rescue, emergency, entrance, control on other side, danger, ejection seat, danger, danger. I believe that there are two, two one pilot and a, a crew member. They used to fly uh, spy missions. I think these planes are retired now. They used to fly spy missions over the Soviet Union and elsewhere, I believe. This is long. Look at the wing, how it curves down. SR-71. Lau, what do you know about this plane? Fast plane in the world. I think they still use it. You think so? They're still in use? Look at that jet. Oh, it's, it's uh, skunk powered. Uh, that must be skunk works, huh? Kids can get in and take pictures. Just request don't stand on the wings. Look how wide that body is. Quite an airplane. Wow, it's amazing. It's amazing to be this close to one. Are they still in use? Yeah, back 93 was the last uh, military. Oh, really? And then NASA had a couple to use for testing different things. It was. Is it still the fastest plane? Oh yeah. Oh really? Much. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. uh, well, for jet powered. Yeah. And it's uh, ramjet engine. A oh, ramjet engine. Uh, it had a bypass for ramjet. Because now, of the atmosphere, the high, high, yeah. the lack of oxygen. You see the the cone here. Yes. Well, as that thing would. Get up altitude. May I put you? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. The cone come out. Yeah. And slow the air down because it goes so fast it blow the fire out. No kidding. And if the fire blew out, then you're in trouble. So that's what this cone is for, is to slow the air down. Uh -huh. And so the ramjet was for the the low oxygen uh, at the high altitude. It's called the J58 engine, and that's the only one that they built that way, and it's the only one that used JP7. Normally, when the plane was on the ground. It would just be wet with fuel. Wet with fuel? They yeah, all over the place. They had drip pans. What? Uh, you could throw cigarettes in it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't not ignite. Not, not until it got to 40 below zero and you had to put a catalyst to make it go with it. Uh, then it was a real fire breather. Oh my gosh. And it, um, my daughter's uh, <laughs> want, want to know what, one more question, if I may. Yeah. Was it, did it technically go into outer space or was it right at the edge? It was at the edge. They could get it going fast and get it out into uh, space where they couldn't use the the, the ailerons and the control circuit. Really? But it would eventually come back. In. Gravity would pull it back yeah. down. It, did, they just couldn't get past the gravity. Did they actually do that? Did they? Uh, yeah, and there was a few pilots got grounded for it too. <laughs> That's stunning. They actually kind of brought it in technically into space, and without gravity, they would have just kept on going. I mean, so the gravity brought them back down. They had a F-104 that was modified with a rocket motor in the tail. And it was just as an experiment, and it got out in, into space, and they eventually got it so they could... It Ch change the attitude? They hit it with the, the jet and run it back into the atmosphere. That's a scary story. That was scared him, too. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> they, you know, they thought they would go out so far, but it went a little further. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things. Uh, the biggest problem with this is this design for people that's about a foot tall. Uh, to work on it. Oh, really? Oh, it was a pain. To get inside all yeah, the... In, yeah. What's inside all in here? This is where, the, where all the instruments would be kept? And yeah, there was three different systems. They had one in front of the landing gear uh, was a tracker, and it would take pictures, 100 square miles, and it would be one right after another so they could track exactly where the plane went. Right. And the camera was going click, click, click. It was going so fast. Then the second camera was the 70 millimeter. Right. They could read license plates from 80,000 feet. And then the one right back here was called a side looking radar SLR. Yeah. And it'd go up 250 miles either side. And if there was a pickup truck had been moved recently, they could tell by the heat signature on the ground what was there. So this was totally dedicated spy plane. That's all so, it did. That's it. it didn't take. It, and it wouldn't take much in the way of uh, G's. It'd come apart. Really? So yeah. just get up to altitude, cruise. Just fly straight mainly. How how far could it fly? That's Long ways. It, but now, once it got up, the before they flew one of these, uh, KC-135 took off two hours before flight, 
and then another one would take off at 20 minutes before takeoff. Because this thing could not take off with a full load of fuel. The engines were not designed for low altitude. Right. It was all they could do to get it off the ground. But it would catch the 20 minute out right away at about 20,000 feet, refuel, and then catch the two hour out pretty quick, and then refuel, and it would go up to 80, 85,000 feet, and it could stay up 18 hours. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I think my. I think my duck stretch like a foot or something when it got to full speed. Uh, it would grow nine inches. Nine inches. Yeah. Stunning. Okay. okay, let's go see. Thank you so much for your time. This is very, very interesting.